What's good, Internet? My name is Attack Slug, and welcome to my first impressions of Expedition Zero, launching on the PC on March the 24th, 2022. As always, full disclosure, this game provided by the publisher. Now, I've played about three hours thus far. This is a survival horror experience with a much wider emphasis on the survival aspects. You find yourself trapped in a snow-covered forest with a 50-foot high wall surrounding this desolate little village, and something has gone wrong here. Some kind of a forbidden experiment, and it falls upon you to investigate and hopefully eventually escape. And surprise, surprise, everyone else is dead. So as you approach this strange village, a voice on the radio beckons you and says, I need you to complete these tasks for me. Thus sending you on your merry way on the first handful of in-game objectives. I found the tutorial to be pretty straightforward, and based on what I played on this demo like a year or two ago, they made some serious strides on the onboarding in the game. But when it comes to the survival mechanics, you have two main things to worry about. The heat, as you are in like Siberia or whatever, and the battery. Now the heat is handled by finding wood in the world and finding somewhere to put that wood and kindle a fire. And your main battery can be recharged either on your sled that goes with you to each location or finding batteries in the world or finding locations that can recharge your batteries. The first thing you're going to notice playing this game is that the movement speed is extremely slow. Even with the sprint button, you're going to find yourself slogging through these areas. And that all feels very deliberate. I'm not entirely sure how large these maps will get later on in the game, but this first main map you are in, it takes quite a while to get from point A to point B because you are trudging through the snow in the winter through storms and whatever else. And yes, that stamina meter will drain and drain and drain. But if you are wondering, well then how do I survive longer in this harsh, harsh climate? Well, there is an entire crafting system. One of the first things you find is a crowbar, and that crowbar allows you to scavenge a variety of different objects in the in-game world. You'll find tin cans and screws and PCBs and all kinds of various knickknacks. And even though this all feels very archaic in these environments you're exploring, it all feels very old school, old world stuff, somehow, someway, there are a bunch of 3D printers. And I'm not sure if eventually that's going to get explained in the lore, but it just seems kind of out of place in terms of how the rest of the game is playing out. The benefit of that is you can break down all of these scavenging things you find into three main components. And those three components can be used to craft new gear. You get insulation, you get a gas mask, you get a bigger battery. But importantly, the first two things you need are a flashlight and a signal locator. And that signal locator is pretty vague. It's going to point you in a general direction and beep here and then in terms of if you're getting any closer or farther to the next anomaly. But I found in the first couple of hours that generally these anomalies are in different areas with buildings and or parts of civilization. I have yet to find any kind of out in the woods randomly, thankfully. So, you're wandering in the woods. You have a crowbar. You also find a very, very old gun. And reloading this gun seems pretty freaking realistic considering how slow it takes. And of course, if a game gives you a gun, that means there's going to be enemies to encounter. There are three types I've seen thus far. Number one, you're going to find a slow, lumbering zombie type. That's like three shots, maybe two, in the face, knock him down, and he's done. Those, honestly, if you don't have the ammo, just run. They aren't very fast. You'll be fine. However, enemy type number two is going to be the weird, fast creature. And I'm not sure how effective hiding really is from them, but it seems kind of hit or miss on what I've played so far. But again, I played about two hours, then it got patched, and I played another hour past that. So things may have changed in that patch. I'm not sure. But one thing that I have seen even after the patch is that there is a third enemy type, which has a very long tongue, much like the liquor in Left 4 Dead. And this will stun you in place and do damage. Now, the problem I've found thus far is that this liquor type enemy can get you through walls. And I'm pretty sure it shouldn't be able to do that. So hopefully that gets patched 
sooner than later because it's kind of annoying trying to hide in a building and having this giant tongue hit you in the face and drain your health. Now I do feel that the audio and visual design here go a long way to really instill a feeling of dread. The pace of the game feels somewhat hopeless and the odds seem insurmountable. But there was one thing pre-patch that was, I guess, fixed post-patch, and that was the save system and the checkpointing. Because before the patch, you get to a point where you were out of battery and out of heat, and all of a sudden your health drains and you die, but the auto checkpoint puts you back where you were with your health and your battery and your heat all back. After the patch, they fixed that. Which is why I was forced to start over because my save file was right where I was dying. Now, from a technical perspective, I feel that this game looks okay. And being just okay, I'm kind of confused as to why it maxes out my graphics card at 100%. I am currently running a 3070 Founders Edition, and that is paired with a Ryzen 5600X with 32 gigs of RAM. What I'm trying to say is my machine is no slouch, and it's maxing it out and making this room hot, and I feel like it's kind of a bit unoptimized. So certainly keep that in mind. Even putting all of the settings on low, it still maxed out my video card for apparently no reason. But technical concerns aside, I found the overall vibe of the game appropriately scary and enjoyable to play. I think it really nails that Lost in the Woods type feel, and there are just enough narrative hooks to want to keep going and discover just what went wrong here. At this point, I've only been to that kind of first main sprawling area and clearly on your fast travel map there are more areas to unlock so i can't speak to if that gameplay is going to be any different from what is already in this first area but i do think the first couple of hours here are very promising in terms of where this game is going to go so here's hoping it does manage to vary up the objectives you complete as you progress through the rest of the story in any event, Expedition Zero is out March 24th on Steam. I don't know the price. They didn't tell me. But it is out on the PC, on Steam, and GOG.com. I'm a tax slug. Thanks for watching. More videos right here. I'll see you next time. And I'm out.